Cool. Thank you guys for letting us have some fun this morning. Happy Father's Day to all you amazing fathers out there. Thank you for (laughs) impregnating a woman. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. Let's try this again. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers. Thank you for being amazing men who love your kids. And if you've got your Bible, woo, if you've got your Bible, <laughs> turn over to Exodus chapter 17, because I don't know how you recover from that. You don't. Sorry, dear. Well, I was thinking, because on Mother's Day, I'm always like, if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be here, and if it weren't for you fathers... We wouldn't either, so it takes two to tango. Thank you. Someone gets it. This is God's house. It's okay. Ah, I love this place. Exodus chapter 17. I promise I won't go too long this morning because we are having some fun this morning. If you don't mind my Bible, my son got a hold of it this week. I'm just going to pull Genesis right out of here and just set it on the side. (laughs) That's super glue. All right, Exodus chapter 17, starting in verse 8. I'm going to read this, and then we're going to pray so I can get serious, because I don't feel like it right now. Okay. The, oh, goodness. You know what? I'm going to pray first. We're going to rehearse this. Let me pray, and then we'll get in the Word. God, I thank you for laughter, and I thank you for fun, and I thank you for fathers, and I thank you for every parent in this room and what they um, represent to our church and to our community and to our families. Just pray today that uh, as we open your Word and as we take from um, some people in the Old Testament some great principles, God, that you would transform our lives and help each of us to lead better in our families and in our communities. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Exodus 17, starting in verse 8, it says, The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Raphidim. Raphidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Malachites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, or, or, and, and Moses, Aaron and Hur, went up to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But when he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, I'm sorry, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with a sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, What? Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it, because I will completely blot out the memory of Malachek. From under heaven, Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, For hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord, and the Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. So we're going to talk this morning about holding up your hands. I was trying to think of what do you preach about on Father's Day? I do the same thing on Mother's Day, right? What do you talk about on holidays? What do you talk about on Hallmark holidays, by the way, right? Which, if any of you went to buy your dad a card, you should have. You should have. But you see that these cards now cost as much as a car. You know, like, like they just add a D at the end and put a piece of paper and say, well, they'll pay it for a car. I guess they'll pay it for a card. It's the stupidest thing ever. My dad's not into Hallmark holidays, so he always says, just get me some peanut butter and we're good. So I didn't send him a card. If you're watching, sorry, Dad. I just realized that as I was sitting here. Um, but anyways... We get all these days that come up, right? And as a pastor, you're like, what do you do to encourage people? And so I was praying this week about what to say. And one of my favorite passages of scripture is in Psalm 112. And it talks about a righteous person and all the things that they'll have. And I was studying that. And for some reason, this idea of holding up hands came into my head. And I thought, you know what? That was probably God. Let me go back into Exodus and find this story. And I started reading this story. And I thought, for Father's Day, I don't know what's a better topic to talk about than what it means to be a hand-holding 
in the air kind of person. And this doesn't matter if you're a dad or a mom, if you're single, if you're married, it doesn't matter who you are. This can apply to you today because I believe that what God wants to tell us and show us today is that as we keep our hands lifted, we will constantly impact the next generation. As we keep our hands lifted, we will constantly impact the next generation. And so we find at the beginning of this story, Moses calling war and telling Joshua to go fight the Amalekites. Now, Israel has, has fought a lot of battles at this point. We're in Exodus 17. I teach out of Exodus a lot. If you've studied Exodus, there's a lot of battles they fight. But there's something in this battle that's different in the obedience that God requires Moses to have in going out to fight. Moses is kind of overseeing the Israelites. Joshua's at the front lines, and he's the one going out there and leading this war. But God tells Moses, go send Joshua out to fight this battle. But as he's fighting it, you must keep your hands raised. Your hands need to stay up in the air. And if your hands come down, stay raised, you will win. But if they come down, you'll lose. And I don't know about you, but I think sometimes in life, what God is looking for from you and I is a life that says, I will keep my hands raised. Because the act of raising your hands is more than just God saying, Moses, keep your hands raised. In Moses keeping his hands up, he's declaring that God is good. He's declaring that God is fighting for him. He's declaring that he's got the victory. He's saying, God, you got all the authority. You got all the power. You can win this war. You can win this battle. I thank you that you are good. I thank you that you are great. I thank you that you go before us. And Moses is just praising God with his hands raised like you and I should be in our lives. If you would take time in your life to start your day up, off just holding up your hands, you would be astonished at what God would start fighting for you. Because sometimes in our life, we can't seem to win at anything we're going through because we haven't put God first in our life. And God says to Moses, look, worship me and watch as you win the battle. And so Moses knew, because he'd been around the mountain, literally, quite literally, enough times to know that this is what you do. If God says do it, you do it. God says part the Red Sea, you do it. God, God, God tells you, gives you instruction, go set my people free, you do it. And if God says keep my hands raised, I will keep my hands raised. I will shout. I'll declare that God is good because I'm going to win this war. Everything's great. All I got to do, my, my job's easy. I just got to stand here with my hands raised. Have you ever been in a battle? Maybe not a physical battle. But there's an interesting thing about battles. They take a long time. They're not usually something that, that just comes in and God's like, Moses, hold up your hands. All right. Yes. Ah, oh, 30, 29, 28, 27. After 30 seconds, ah, oh, the battle's won. No. Battles go on for days. And sometimes in your life, God is asking you to worship him and keep your hands raised and keep declaring his goodness and keep being obedient to what he's called you to do. And it's been three years and you're at the place where you're like, God, I can't keep them raised anymore. Right? This week, Kelsey and I were working out with our good buddy John, a worship leader this morning, and he had me doing planks for 30 seconds. 30 seconds, okay? I've been in better shape in my life, but we won't talk about that. But, but right now, planks for 30 seconds are very hard. And so, you know, you get down, I'll, I'll just show you, because, you know, I like illustrated sermons. And so you get like this, and you're like this. When you first start, you're like, hey, this is pretty good. This is kind of fun. I like, I like working out when I can relax, right? Ha, huh. this is good. Not lifting anything. Don't have to run. Don't have to throw balls at the floor. I just get to stay here. But the longer you stay your body starts shaking. You see that? I'm like, whoo, what is that? I'm just laying in the air. I don't understand. Why am I shaking? I don't get it. And I go, and now I'm like, whoo. <laughs> and you stay here, and the more you stay, the more you shake until you literally have to drop your knees 
because you can't sustain any longer. Now, you can build up endurance. There was a time in my life when I was in shape where I could plank for no lie like two and a half minutes and I wouldn't shake. Yeah. Thank you, Janet. I'm going I'm to get there again. I'll show you. But, but right now, I go 30 seconds and my whole body starts to shake. Sometimes if you're in worship, even on a Sunday morning, you got your hands raised, you'll have your hands just worshiping God, and the song's just so good, you don't want to put them down, but you're like, this is really tiring. I do love you, Jesus, but... <sighs> right? Like, your hands are like, it hurts so bad. Because it takes endurance and strength to get to the point where you can keep your hands raised. And God says to Moses, I need you to keep your hands raised because if you let them go, you're not going to win the war. If you want to be a leader at anything in your life, you have got to learn to build endurance because no matter what you do, if you let go, everything around you can fall. And so God puts this instruction on Moses as a leader and says, worship me, keep your hands raised, and you'll win. But Moses grows tired. Maybe you're here this morning and you're saying, I'm tired. I'm tired of leading my family. I'm tired of leading my business. I'm tired of dealing with all the stuff that keeps coming over and over. And I finally got out of debt and then the furnace died and now I'm in more debt. And I'm tired of fighting so hard and I'm, I'm tired of going to work every day. And I punch in and I punch out and I go home and I'm just sick. It's just tired. I'm tired. I think Moses got to a point as he's watching the war be 